Recently, Boeing got itself in a bit of hot water by claiming the F-15 EX could fly as fast as Mach 2.9 only to walk that claim back a few days later, prompting a resurgence in conversations about how the U.S. likes to keep the maximum performance capabilities of its tactical aircraft a closely guarded secret. And that got me thinking again about the SR-71, because, you see, despite retiring a quarter century ago, the SR-71 Blackbird still holds the title as fastest reusable crewed jet aircraft in history, with a stated top speed of Mach 3.2. Now, over the years, I've had the good fortune to speak to a number of Blackbird pilots, and they've pretty much all told me that the aircraft was actually faster than that stated top speed, but none of them would go on the record. So I did a bit of digging to find out just how fast the SR-71 really was, and whether or not its lighter predecessor, the A-12, may have been faster. So let's get to the bottom of the SR-71's actual top speed, and find out why the A-12 doesn't actually hold the speed record. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Before we dive in, let's talk about a very cool sponsor, Aircore Aviation. Based in Bemidji, Minnesota, Aircore Aviation has been helping to keep aviation history alive since 2008. This firm specializes in everything from full-scale restorations of legendary World War II aircraft to supporting modern aviation and aerospace efforts thanks to a broad spectrum of in-house expertise in everything from CAD, engineering, and custom fabrication to welding, painting, and airframe inspections. This 60-person company has an incredible restoration portfolio that includes amazing aircraft like P-47 Thunderbolts and one of my personal favorites, a number of P-51 Mustangs. But what's even cooler is that this 60-person company has been so successful that they're rapidly growing. Right now, Air Corps Aviation has a bunch of full-time positions open. They're looking for people to work in CAD, engineering, restoration, fabrication, and quality assurance. This is an opportunity to get your hands dirty with legitimate aviation history. Now, these full-time jobs come with full-time benefits, including health insurance, paid time off, retirement funds, and maybe best of all, a four-day work week. So if you want to see more of what Air Corps Aviation is up to, go to aircoraviation.com. And if you think you have what it takes to help Air Corps Aviation keep these World War II legends in the sky, make sure to go to aircoraviation.com slash careers. And when you apply, make sure to tell them I sent you, because Lord knows the next time I'm covering a World War II aircraft, I could always use another expert in my Rolodex. Now, the SR-71 Blackbird was actually the third aircraft to emerge from Kelly Johnson's Archangel program out of Lockheed Skunk Works, the other two being the air-to-air -air missile armed YF-12 and the A-12 spy plane that was actually nearly 13,000 pounds lighter than the Blackbird. Now, according to the U.S. Air Force, the SR-71's top speed was Mach 3.2. And according to the aircraft's flight manual, pilots should not push the aircraft beyond Mach 3.3, though it does very clearly say that it is not power limited to Mach 3.3. The engines could continue to accelerate, but at Mach 3.3, the aircraft is reaching the outside limits of its thermal and structural integrity. Now, according to former SR-71 pilot Bradette B.C. Thomas, the fastest most Blackbird pilots would ever see in this aircraft was right around Mach 3.33, which, depending on altitude, is about 100 miles per hour faster than the aircraft's stated top speed. But that's during standard operational flight, not the fastest the aircraft has ever flown in testing. And in fact, there are a number of accounts of SR-71s doing quite a bit better than that. In one instance, recounted by retired U.S. Air Force Master Sergeant Jim Goodall in his book, Lockheed's SR-71 Blackbird, one testing flight of Blackbird Tail 974 reached as high as Mach 3.43. Now that is more than 175 miles per hour 
faster than the SR-71 stated top speed. But believe it or not, that's still not the fastest account I found. Former Blackbird pilot Brian Shul, who passed away last year, had some incredible stories about his days flying the SR-71, but many of them are considered to be apocryphal by other members of the Blackbird, or Habu, community. Nonetheless, according to Shul's accounts, during Operation El Dorado Canyon back in 1986, he pushed his SR-71 all the way up to Mach 3.5, while outrunning Libyan surface-to-air missiles. And while Shul's stories may sometimes be subject to controversy, at least one person from Lockheed Skunk Works at the time, an electrical engineer turned research analyst named Tim Yarrow, who worked at the Skunk Works for 20 years between 1974 and 1994, has gone on record to say that he buys it. Now, Mach 3.5 would be a mind-boggling 230 miles per hour faster than the SR-71's stated and record-setting top speed of Mach 3.2. But believe it or not, I'm still not even quite through yet, because the SR-71's older and thinner sister, the Lockheed A-12, may even have that beat. Turning back to Master Sergeant Goodall's book, he recounts one A-12 envelope expansion test flight flown by legendary Lockheed test pilot Jim Eastham, known to many as Dutch 52. According to Goodall's account, Eastham was flying A-12 tail number 128 on an unusually warm day, and as anybody who's ever tuned a turbocharged car can tell you, warm air is less dense than cold air, which has a negative effect on performance. In fact, Eastham was struggling to get the A-12 to exceed Mach 2.7. So maybe due to a bit of frustration, Eastham pointed the nose of his aircraft down ever so slightly, putting the A-12 into a shallow dive. Now, according to Goodall, he had the aircraft redlined at this point, and just as he started the dive, he hit a patch of what Goodall calls good air. And as soon as the A-12's J-58s gulped down some of that colder air, it immediately accelerated the aircraft all the way up to Mach 3.56, which it sustained for about 15 seconds. Now, depending on altitude, that's more than 275 miles per hour faster than the SR-71's stated top speed. But the A-12 doesn't hold the record. The SR-71 does, and that is for good reason. You see, setting an official speed record entails a lot more than just a short sprint to your maximum speed recorded by your ground speed indicator in the cockpit or a local radar array. According to the National Aeronautic Association's Speed Record Attempt Kit, which is a document provided to organizations attempting to break speed records, the minimum distance you're required to cover in a record-setting attempt is 200 kilometers, or just about 125 miles, which itself is actually a 50% reduction over what it used to be at 400 kilometers, or around 249 miles. And before you make an attempt, you have to notify the NAA ahead of time to make sure they can certify your results. And not only do you need certified equipment to confirm the average flight speed of the aircraft over that distance, but you also need official observers who are notified ahead of time and are standing by to verify the authenticity of the run. In other words, you really can't set an official speed record unless you set out to do exactly that in the first place and make arrangements prior to your flight to verify all the data. If you happen to exceed that record-setting speed during a testing flight, for instance, well, it doesn't really matter as far as the record books are concerned. Now, both the A-12 and SR-71 did complete these officiated record-setting runs at one time or another, with the A-12's top speed being achieved in 1965 at right around Mach 3.29. The SR-71 set its record 11 years later, in 1986, and that record still stands today at Mach 3.32. So how fast was the SR-71 really? Well, there are multiple sources that point to the possibility of the aircraft being capable of achieving speeds as high as Mach 3.5 or maybe even faster. But it's important to remember that doing so would exceed the thermal safety limits of the compressor inlet on the aircraft's J-58 turbo ramjet engines, not to mention pushing the thermal and structural limits of the fuselage itself. The one thing we can say for sure is that the aircraft was certainly faster than has been officially disclosed. According to former Skunk Works director Ben Rich, who worked on the SR-71's inlet design under Kelly Johnson, the aircraft was designed to cruise at what he called a sweet spot 
of Mach 3.24, maybe 30 miles per hour faster than its disclosed maximum speed. And according to every Blackbird pilot I've ever spoken to, the aircraft still had lots of throttle room left when cruising at Mach 3.2. Most pilots simply didn't exceed that because it wouldn't make sense to take an unnecessary risk with their own lives and with an aircraft that, when adjusted to today's inflation, cost about $334 million a piece. On the runway, you know, you get on the runway about two minutes before your launch time, and in about 60 seconds, you start pushing the power up to about 90, 80, uh, excuse me, 80%, because any more than that, the wheel, the tires would turn inside the wheels. And then when the time was zero, you released the brakes, went to full max afterburner, and on this particular rocket ride, uh, take off about 240 knots, pull the nose up 15 degrees, suck the gear up, and just hang on for the ride. And and we we I went to uh, from brake release through the Mach uh, above 80,000 feet and above Mach 3 in less than 12 minutes. But does this tell us anything about Boeing's Mach 2.9 claim and subsequent retraction? Now, I honestly couldn't say, but I can tell you that the F-15EX is powered by a pair of GE F-110-129 turbofan engines that produce more than 11,500 pounds more thrust than the F-15C's Pratt & Whitney power plants. And the aircraft also has something known as a VMAX switch located on the left-hand side of the cockpit, right near the canopy. And to give you a gross analogy of what the VMAX switch is, you can sort of think of it as the NOS button from the Fast and the Furious movies. Now this switch is only to be used in case of emergencies, and when pressed, it increases the fuel flow into the engine and the afterburner to 104%. Now this can only be used for a maximum of six minutes, but by then you'll probably be out of gas anyway then that could be enough to accelerate the aircraft all the way up to Mach 2.9 in a short sprint. But even if it could, it really wouldn't matter. It would have really no bearing whatsoever on the aircraft's actual combat capability. One conclusion I do feel comfortable drawing, however, is that the F-15EX is almost certainly faster than the Air Force is comfortable with admitting. And that'll do it for this edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.